Bringing hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacy. Living Word with Pastor Mensah Otobu. And now, today's word. Praying through. Praying through. This is a phrase I heard years ago when I was a teenager. I was uh, part of a, a prayer group, an evangelistic association of young people in my community, myself, my brothers, some of our friends. It seemed as if in our neighborhood, within a certain time, almost every young man or woman in our neighborhood was touched by the presence of God. So we started a prayer meeting and, and used to pray. But because we were young, we got an older person to lead us, and he was uh, an Air Force uh, captain, and so he had a lot of military attitude. So he treated our prayer meeting as a military drill, and, and when we went to pray, it was hard, you know, he had to drill us. One of the things he used to emphasize was this phrase, pray through. And when he meant pray through, it means that as part of our group, we used to go to sing, and it was a drama group as well as a singing group. But he said no matter how good your voice was and no matter how well you acted, if you didn't pray through, you wouldn't sing. And his praying through means that from Monday to Friday, you have to pray what we call hot night. Hot night is you pray from about at 10 in the evening till about 1 in the morning, so about three hours, 10 to one. And you have to do that for five days before you qualify to sing. Now, if, if we apply that rule here, most of you would never sing in this church. But that's what he meant by pray through. He meant, he said, keep praying. Sometimes, you know, most of us couldn't pray through. And so if only one person prayed through, that's the only person who sang. If two people pray through, he makes them sing. And so we all endeavored to obey his military deal, and somehow it helped us. We, we learned how to pray for a long time. And so I'm going back to my foundations about praying through. Are you ready to do that? All right. So praying through is praying constantly, persistently, insistently until you begin to see answers. So turn with me in the book of First Kings, chapter 18, verses 41 to 40. Six. First Kings chapter 18, verses 41 to verse 46. This is after Elijah had challenged the prophets of Baal to a contest on Mount Carmel. The challenge was that the God who answers by fire, he would be the God for Israel to worship. And the prophets of Baal prayed for fire to come down from heaven to consume a sacrifice, they pray for hours, nothing happened. Elijah prayed, Elijah prayed, and fire came down, and the sacrifice was consumed. And uh, prior to that, Elijah had declared three and a half years of drought. There was no rain. But after this contest, and Jehovah had been proving to be the God that is worthy of worship, Elijah speaks a new word to turn the situation around. And uh, we're going to look at some things about Elijah in this prayer. So let's go to the reading, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41 to 45. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground, put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. <clears throat> then, he came, then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud, as small as a man's hand, rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah 
and he gathered up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Amen. Elijah, the prophet of God, and as was his ministry was like, he made declarations. He said things. When people were in disobedience, he said, by my word, there will be no rain for three and a half years. And by his word, there was no rain. It's great to have such a man in your country. The king has no power. The scientists have no power because the man has spoken, there will be no rain. And everybody is perplexed, and there is no rain. He had a way of making declarations. But after saying there will be no rain, he made a second declaration, and he says, there is a sound of abundance of rain. There is the sound of abundance of rain. It's very interesting. He didn't say there is abundance of rain. He said there is the sound of abundance of rain. When he made this statement, there was no rain. As a matter of fact, it had not rained for three and a half years. The clouds were off the skies. It was a clear sky as it had been for three and a half years. There was no audible sound. Nobody had heard, no wind, no evidence, but he declared there is the sound of abundance of rain. So obviously, the sound he was talking about was not a physical sound. Elijah had heard something that nobody else was hearing. Although there was no evidence that things were going to change, and there was no evidence that there was going to be a turnaround in the situation, he pronounced what he heard in the spirit. That statement is twofold. First, it is a declaration of a spiritual revelation. I believe Elijah heard something in the realm of the spirit, and then he declared it. And then not only is it a declaration of a heavenly revelation or spiritual revelation, it was also a faith declaration. Elijah was saying something that he believed will become a reality. You know, every Sunday morning we make a faith declaration that this is our year of the breakthrough. At the time you are saying this is your year of the breakthrough, I'm sure obviously you may not be experiencing a breakthrough. The sky is clear, there is no rain, but you are saying there is a sound. It doesn't seem wise. That is why walking by faith appears foolish. How can you say there is a sound of abundance of rain when there's been no rain for three and a half years? What evidence do you have? How can you prove it? How can you say you have breakthrough when your life is in a mess. You have financial problems. You have serious problems you can't solve. And you come to church and every day Pastor Otabel says, this is my year of the breakthrough. And you also speak aloud, this is my year of the breakthrough. Where is the sign that you have a breakthrough? You don't see before you say. You say it before you see it. Faith does not follow reality. Reality follows faith. Faith does not declare what is there. What is there is a manifestation of what faith has said. So if you're always going to wait for evidence before you say something out of your mouth, you will never say anything. Or the best you can do is only comment on the situation. Life is hard. Things are tough. I'm going through difficulties. I can't make it. We can't make it. And the worst of all, we are all dying. Now, if you're dying, you can die by yourself, but don't invite others into your party. People go through difficulty, and they speak words out of their mouth, words that does not have any faith in it because they're only commenting on the situation. If Elijah was to comment on the situation, he would have said, there is drought, and I can't see any hope in the future. 
But he said there is a sound of abundance of rain. This month I hear the sound of abundance of rain. This year I believe there will be a sound of abundance of rain in your life. You can also be like Elijah and you can declare there is a sound of victory for me in this month. There is a sound of favor in this month. There is a sound of a breakthrough in this month. There is a sound of abundance of rain. People are going to say, where is the rain? I can't see it, but I hear the sound. You have to hear it in your spirit first. Declare it with your mouth before you see it with your eyes. If you're waiting for the evidence, you may wait for a long time and never see the power of God at work in your life. God is a God of faith. He's not a God of sight. He's a God of of faith. Everybody say, there is a sound of abundance of rain. The revelations we, we de and declarations we make have got power. When Elijah made this declaration, there is the sound of abundance of rain. There are two responses to that statement. Two responses we're going to look at. A, a statement has been made a declaration has been made, and we're going to see how people respond to those statements. Because you see, people today still respond in the same way. There is first the natural man's response. That was what Ahab did. Ahab was the king, but he was a very carnal king. He didn't worship God, didn't care about God, just wanted to go about his life. He felt God was an interference into his life. Ahab heard there is a sound of abundance of rain. What did Ahab do? The Bible says he went up to eat and drink. The natural man, the natural man, when he hears the word of God or a declaration, does not know how to bring that word into reality. He doesn't know what to do about the word. He's heard it. And he just went to eat. He that simply means he went about his normal life as if nothing has been said. He just went to eat. As a matter of fact, it was Elijah who encouraged him, go ahead, that's how you are. Go eat and drink. That's how your life is. The natural man hears there is a sound of abundance of rain and he goes to eat. This month, some of you will hear profound words. But don't just hear it and go eat and drink. Don't just hear it and go about your life as if there is nothing happening in your life. If God speaks a word, you must have a different attitude. So there is a second response, the spiritual man's response. That was Elijah's response. The Bible says Elijah went to the top of Carmel. He went to the top of the mountain, Mount Carmel. He was a spiritual man. He had declared a word. He knew that for the word to become a reality, he was not just going to go eat and drink like Ahab. So whilst Ahab is eating and drinking, Elijah went to the top of the mountain to pray. Remember, he had had a great victory on the mountain. He had experienced the power of God on the mountain, but he goes back there again. He doesn't just say, well, it's been great. I will just sit here and things will manifest. He goes back to the mountain. When you hear a word from God, you must have Elijah's attitude. You don't go eat and drink and go about your life as if nothing is happening. You go to the top of the mountain. And the top of the mountain is not just a place to have a good view of Israel. He didn't go for sightseeing. He went for part two of what he had begun. He had won the spiritual battle against the prophets of Baal. Now he has to win a second battle to cause the rain to come. The God who gives you victory over your enemies also opens the heavens for you. God does not solve one problem and leave the other unsolved. If he can move prophets of Baal out of the way, he can also open the heavens for you. So Elijah goes to the mountain. That's the spiritual man's response. And this month, that's what we are doing as a church, praying and fasting. 
You think we don't like food? We also like food. Some of you are Ahab, eating and drinking. Everybody say, we're going to the top of the mountain. This month, we are on Mount Carmel. We are going to the top of the mountain. We are not just going to eat and drink. We are going to the top of the mountain. God has spoken. There is a declaration. And it's not going to come to pass just if you went to eat and drink. It comes to pass when you take a new level of faith and go to the top of the mountain. That is the spiritual person's response. And I pray that will be your response this month. You know, you've eaten for 11 months. 11 months solid. Eat, 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 eat. Breakfast, lunch, supper. Breakfast, lunch, supper. In between snacks, eating, eating, eating. Just one month. Take time to wait on God. Go to Mount Carmel. Go to the mountain. Go and say, Lord, you declared it. I have come to receive it. You said this is my year of the breakthrough. I've come to pray to make it a reality. Be serious about this month. Don't just go about your life. Be serious. Otherwise, the declaration will be there, but it will never become a reality in your life. Elijah, Elijah goes to the mountain. Ahab just goes to eat. Revelations and declarations become a reality through prayer. When God reveals something to us, we need to pray to see it become a reality. You can't just sit around and hope that things will be all right. That, oh, things will change. Things don't just change. Something must cause the change. And prayer is a force that brings about change. So what did Elijah go to do on the mountain? We're going to look at Elijah's posture. And they talk about the posture of prayer. When we pray, these are the things we do. The first thing I've said is that Elijah went on top of the mountain. That speaks of a position of spiritual authority. In the Bible, mountains are symbols of authority, symbols of power. So when the Bible talks about mountain, it's talking about power. Elijah went to the top of the mountain. He positioned himself in a place of authority. We don't come praying miserable prayers. Oh, God, I don't know. Oh, God, if you will. Oh, God, please. Oh, God. We come with authority because the Bible says, let us come with boldness to the throne of grace. We come before God with boldness, not our own boldness, but we come with boldness because Jesus made a way for us. And so you have to come and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come claiming X, Y, Z. That is spiritual authority. You don't come afraid of the devil. You come knowing that you have the victory. You come, don't come afraid of demons. You come knowing you have the victory. This month, you are walking on top of principalities, powers, dominions, authorities. You are walking on top of all of them. Whatever has been running after you and pursuing you, this month, you are going to the mountain. Stand in spiritual authority. Don't stand in fear. You stand in spiritual authority. And stand in boldness. The Bible says we walk upon serpents and scorpions. That is spiritual authority. On top of the mountain. In prayer, we don't pray as people who are weak and have no hope and have no certainty. We pray as people who are confident that what God has said he is able also to provide. Thank you for listening to Live and Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otebi, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensah Otebi. Email otebi at centralgospel.com or call plus 233-302-688-0000.